welcome to the third annual Edward M. Kennedy uh, Prize Ceremony. This year, I, I feel like I have to say, uh, the prize is going to a writer who I consider to be not only one of the uh, greatest playwrights this country has produced, but one of the greatest living writers and somebody of whom I'm genuinely in awe. This year's recipient is uh, Susan Laurie Parks. So I'm just... For some 25 years, Susan Laurie Parks has been writing plays that engage American history in ways that don't just fill in some of the gaps in the standard tellings of our national narrative, but that counterintuitively perhaps, but urgently, dig more deeply into them and pry them open more widely. Bought or sold, forced to work, make men rich while we stay poor. And most soldiers, they're poor, colored and white, both. And there's more to freedom than I can explain, but believe me, it's like living in glory. Who will I belong to? You belong to yourself. Now I'm going to read the judge's citation. The jury deeply admires all four of this year's nominated works. From amongst this distinguished group, the jury awards the Edward M. Kennedy Prize for Drama inspired by American history to Father Comes Home from the Wars, parts one, two, and three, by Suzanne Laurie Parks. I'd like to thank the Senator Edward M. Kennedy uh, Prize for honoring Father Comes Home from the Wars, parts one, two, and three. All these characters are pursuing freedom, and near the end of part three, a wandering group of runaway slaves wonder about freedom. They wonder about the very thing they're risking their lives to obtain. And they say, the place I'm going to now is freedom. Pretty much most of my career in writing has been about playing with history or making history. Like I said, uh, on the stage, I really feel like I, I deal a lot with holes, H-O-L-E-S, and theater, making history through making theater is a way to create W-H-O-L-E, wholeness, unity. Um, to, you know, not just to fill in the gaps of the parts of history that were forgotten, discarded, not even written down, not even remembered. I really believe that if it happens on stage, it really happened. So people will say about one of my plays, like, did that really happen? And I'm like, yeah, it happens every night. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that. And I really, I, I believe that. I did a, a talk up at, uh, over at Harvard, and I sat between Eric Foner, he's like yeah. badass historian, right? And Henry Louis Gates. So I sat between these two esteemed um, scholars, and you know, they were, you know, ta da da da, and I was like, D -d 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 -d. but I think history is both that, the pillars and the movement, and the sort of what Skip Gates might call, you know, the signifying monkey, that game playing that goes on in between. So it's not just like marching by the rules or painting by numbers. It's, there's a creative element. Uh, uh, drama has uh, a looser relationship to um, the kind of rigorous standards of um, historicism that scholars adhere to. Uh, one way I think of it is that history is not only a record of what we know and have been able to re recover of the past, which is gone, uh, it's also a record of what's lost, of the things that we can't know. We, we don't know, for instance, uh, thinking about Susan Laurie's play, what the subjective experience of being a slave is. So theater can go into this place that's essentially lost to absolutely uh, certain knowledge and use the tools of the imagination to give us um, uh, new insights. Where is freedom really? Will the air smell sweet? Will the streets be paved with gold? Will all in Freedomville welcome me with open arms? Will there be a bed to lay my freedom head? Will there be food? Freedom will burst my brains to madness, maybe. Maybe freedom will flood my heart to death. Will I say at the end of the day, God, I wish I'd stayed home. Well, I'm glad I didn't stay home tonight. So thank you very much. Thank you.